All right, so it's again time to take a look at Chris and what he's been up to. Uh, he's getting crazier. He's getting crazier. He's starting to talk about the number 33, like uh, people like Call for an Uprising do. So that's not a good sign. When you start to sound like Call for an Uprising, it's probably time to get a CAT scan. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at his newest uh, Van Rant. Van Rant? That's not bad. You can take that, CC. That one's for free. Uh, Van Rant. Here we go. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's, uh, I, you know, I'm, I, I miss the magic number 33. Uh, it, it, anyway, it's 3-4-22. Uh, um, and uh, I just want to get into a couple things with you. Real quick, real quick. Recording in the car on the bingo card, of course. Auntie Pretzel says, Ma'am, I don't consent. As a universal uh, constant creature that has no defined true size or form to be perceived by you. Uh, it's, it's Think About It Friday, and I want you to think about some things. I'm going to first get into uh, the big topic, and that would be the, uh, the moon landing. And Don... Is that the big topic? Has that been the big topic since 1969? You're acting like the moon landing is in the news. <laughs> what? <laughs> Pet it, you sniveling. The one who says that we cannot come up with the equations, because he would love to go back to the moon, but it's too painstaking to, to come up with the equations again. He's not even remembering this clip correctly. So this is a clip that gets used by flat, flat earthers, excuse me, quite often, actually where it's uh, someone who works for NASA, I believe, who's saying, oh, I'd love to go back to the moon, but the technology that we had was uh, destroyed. And what he means by that is rockets in the past were not reusable. Um, they barely are now, even with SpaceX. But we used them. We used them, and we no longer specifically have the equipment that we had in the 60s during the height of the Apollo program to go to the moon. And even if we did, quite frankly, the safety record of the Apollo program, we can do better. Let's put it that way. So, not to mention the shuttle program, which, foreshadowing for later in the stream. Anyway, so, Chris, he didn't say the equations are lost. We have powerful computers, more powerful. This phone in my hand is a more powerful computer than every computer NASA had in 1969 put together. We can calculate how to go to the moon. It's an issue of man hours, time, and equipment, which has to be budgeted for. It's pretty simple. So he's not even representing this clip correctly. This guy come up fallen and says, don't think too hard, CC. Your brain can't take it. You'll hurt yourself. And what equations are these things that he's talking about? Do you know anything that he's fucking saying to begin with anyway? He doesn't even know uh, the, the, the seals that are on the space shuttle, for, for Christ's sake. I mean, okay. Wait, does he think every single person in the space program knows everything about rocket engineering? It's not how that works. Yeah, anyway, anyway, um, so these equations you, you thought maybe would be um, invented by the top scientists of NASA, 10 or 20 of them, sitting down for years and years and, and years trying to figure out how to land a man on the moon. Well, it wasn't. These equations Don Pettit mentions were actually made from an Apollo employee called Margaret Hamilton. Margaret Hamilton, who I believe was Jack Black's mom? Let's see, Margaret Hamilton is an American computer scientist, systems engineer, and business owner. She was director of software engineering division at the MIT Instrumentation Laboratory which developed onboard flight software for NASA's Apollo program. She later founded two software companies, Higher Order Software in 1976 and Hamilton Technologies. This is the person who he's calling just an employee of the <laughs> Apollo program, making it sound like she wasn't a goddamn scientist and engineer who worked on these problems. It's like in his head, he thinks, well, she was a relatively young woman at the time. 
She couldn't have been competent or a scientist. Absolutely ridiculous. <sighs> was it her who was Jack Black's mom? Jack Black. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else. Let me look. Do 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 do. Oh, I'm sorry. She was one of the people who worked on Apollo 13. I apologize. Stone Corbell says, there's a famous picture of her standing next to a giant stack of papers that the Koji wrote. Yeah, it's the thumbnail for CeCe's video. Jack's Black, Jack Black's mom worked on Apollo 13. Apologies. Wrong lady scientist working the Apollo program. Spare Keys says, I wish we could revive the Apollo program so we can escape capitalism in space. Haven't you heard? Capitalism is in space now. There's nowhere to run. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so it's pretty disrespectful and stupid that Chris is being like, she was just an employee of the Apollo program. She was employed as a computer engineer and scientist. Yeah. <laughs> She's Rachelogy says, think he might be an example of this. If it loads... More women in a STEM field leads people to label it as a soft science, according to new research. Ew, Gross. People are sexist and it's really gross. The engineer who came up with these. The thumbnail that I have on this video shows books that are as tall as she is. She was born in 1936. Now, the suspicious part about all of this, okay, is what do you think the suspicious part is going to be, everyone? Kirthin says, maybe we need to drum up some interest in space again. Something like sending Freddy Krueger to space. Past stream reference. And uh, Stone Corbell says, guess we have to k smash capitalism here. <laughs> um, Adia Blue says, 33 is one short of 333, which is the mark of the demi-devil. 666 added is 18, which is the legal age to drink in Australia. Australia is below the equator, which isn't real, and a plot by NASA to convince angels that hell is south. South has five letters, and five is the number of fingers on the left hand. Satan is the left hand of God. Coincidence? <laughs> and then Blackwing Hackety says, why should we listen to CC? 60 years ago, he was a baby. True. Would you trust a baby? Is if you look into it, and you take the numbers 36, and you d divide, and, and you take it away from 1969, she was at the age of 33 when she came up with these equations. That's right, the big number, 33. So we're not really sure exactly, but anyway, they pinned. Yep, that comes after the age of 32, and before 34. That's how that works. I told Jake this, we were talking the other day, and I was like, Jake, you're not allowed to do anything between between the birthday where you turn 33 and the birthday where you turn 34, you are not allowed to do anything of historic note or significance in your life. Conspiracy theorists will be calling you a Freemason for the next thousand years. They see the number 33 and it's like their brain comes. It's they're just like, oh my God, it's the number. It's the Freemason number! It's ridiculous. Tucker White says, The quote suspicious part, unquote, is that she, a woman, was working out of the kitchen. <sighs> Why 33? Um, I believe it's because 33rd degree is the highest level of uh, Freemasonry you can get to. Because as you rank up in Freemasonry, the club, uh, it's like levels 1 to 33. I'll count that as Freemasons on the bingo card. He's referencing it, even if he isn't saying it out loud. It to her, that's the equations that Don Pettit, um, the fake astronaut, uh, is talking. I'll have you know, I'm very fluent in conspiracy bullshit. If they reference something that sounds like gobbledygook to you, there's a chance I might know it. <laughs> I've listened to a lot of this stuff. I know their lingo. About. So just to clear that up, I just wanted to let you know. Okay, now there's a couple things here that, that you also must think about, too, are smartphones. Great. 
KBS says, Dr. Hamilton was brilliant, but she did not precisely invent the equations for the freefall orbits. The geometry and equations for that existed long before NASA needed it. She just put it all together along with others. Um, have I talked to w one in the flesh? Any conspiracy theorists? Yeah, I've talked to Peter. Not like in person, but over Zoom or whatever. Yes. So I brought this up before. I've asked Chris to come on. He doesn't want to. It's a shame. Too. See, that's all they are. He's he's always ignored my messages. There are these big blocks. What about one in person? No, I can't say I've really been in any spaces where I've come face to face with a conspiracy theorist. <sighs> of oh, and then Tea with Goblin says Jesus was 33 when he was crucified, the same age as Margaret Hamilton when she wrote the Apollo Code. Jesus is on the moon, and NASA put him there. Wake up, sheeple. Bless. Delicate as shit. If you drop the fucking thing, it's going to smash into a, a million pieces if you don't have a cover for it. But it's never changed. Smartphones have changed a lot, actually, in the last decade or so. An iPhone, iPhone wasn't the first smartphone, but it was the one that popularized smartphones. I had a smartphone, air quote, before the iPhone. It was dog shit. Don't get me wrong, it was cool at the time, because, you know, what we had previously was worse. But the iPhone changed things. Things have changed a lot. For cell phones in the last decade. Exhibit A. This is my phone. Ooh, look at folds. <laughs> to say cell phones haven't changed is to fundamentally say that you haven't been paying attention. That's an obvious one, you know, the, uh, you know, but like processing speeds, batteries, and it seems like people are like, oh, my battery is so much worse. Yeah, your phone's doing more processing than it used to. It has better like visuals and stuff, but the batteries have actually gotten better. It's just also that the power drain your phone has has also gotten higher in the past decade. So if you stuck this battery somehow in a phone from 2008, it would run for a really long time. Um... But yeah, phones have improved tremendously over the last decade. And if you don't think they have, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, Will I am not okay says I turned 33 at the end of the month, so I can't do anything of significance for a year. Yes. You've been practicing for it your whole life. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's mean. Uh, Adia Blue says, how much do you get paid by Samsung, Hannah? Nothing. In fact, I paid them too much money for this phone. <laughs> I love this phone. I really do, though. I'm not sponsored, but if Samsung wanted to sponsor me, I'll, I'll just sit on stream for three hours and I'll do this. Ooh, look at folds. Uh, Salium X90, thanks for nine months, says, it's finally come to this, huh? Okay, Hannah, let me hear it. What's the name? This stream baby's name is going to be... Baby... Tucker White with 45 bits says, this is all I hear right now. Then you'll say, we're not talking about this or this. We're talking about this. <laughs> and it's not just baby, by the way. It explicitly has to be baby. You have to say it like that or it doesn't count. Never has it changed at all. We're now working on almost 15 years. I believe that these smartphones uh, w w were made, that Apple made these things. Apple didn't invent the smartphone. Stone Corbell says, baby, the exclamation point is part of the name. True? Um, yeah, that's right. He's the first one who came out with the, uh, who passed away, I'm sure. Yeah, I think he really did from, you know, whatever, cancer. Right, yeah. Anyway. Apparently he thinks Steve Jobs is secretly still alive, which isn't true. Steve Jobs got pancreatic cancer, I believe, and then tried to treat it with fruit. Fun fact, fruit doesn't cure cancer. So if you get cancer, which is very unfortunate, get actual treatment from doctors. Anyway, uh, he's the one who, who made this, the touch screen, and that's what, what you're watching. Steve Jobs did not invent the touch screen, nor did Apple invent the touch screen. Watching me through right now, or you may be watching me on a computer or the television. I don't know. Whatever it may be, it doesn't make a difference. Apple's the one who made these. But it's never changed. The technology has not changed one little bit. They've gotten faster. They've gotten uh, slimmer. You know, but... It All of these things are changes. You're listing... You're listing changes... 
They've gotten bigger, their capabilities have improved, the form factor is similar. But again, even that has changed with stuff like this, especially now. There's flip phones like this, there's flip phones that are more like the original clamshell ones, but with touchscreens inside. The reason that phones have stayed relatively the same in form factor of just being like a, a rectangular, roughly, square in your hand is because it's a good form factor for what you're doing with the device. The internals are what change for the most part. It hasn't changed at all, and it won't change. The only way they're going to be able to change smartphones right now is if they manage to put it inside of us or something. You know, they tried to do the wraparound screen, you know, the, the oil screen, shall we call it? Didn't work. Good. Don't know what he's talking about there. Tucker White says, of course he's not dead, Hannah. Steve Jobs grew sick of dealing with plebs, so he effed off to the same Pacific Island that Amelia Earhart and MH370, quote, disappeared, unquote. The technology's too difficult. It kept flapping open and flapping open, and the screen would go out after a thousand times of doing that. And I think they have another one that's out that's just as flimsy, you know. But it, it, it's, you see, we get stagnant with technology. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like... A lot of technology develops in an S-curve. That's an understood concept. But I don't necessarily think smartphones are in that category. Maybe in the design sense, again, stuff like this is relatively new, but like... Yeah, that's how technology works sometimes. You'll have some breakthrough in either materials or engineering. All of a sudden you'll have all sorts of like new innovations. Things will stay kind of the same for a while. Oh, a new breakthrough in materials or batteries or form factor or engineering or design. Whoop. That's what an S-curve is. It's not uncommon. Like we're stealing. But again, I wouldn't necessarily say phones are in that category. Technology from somewhere. And that's it. It just stays exactly the way it is because we can't figure anything else out to do. <laughs> the combustible engine. For crying out loud, in 1920, we were driving around with fucking electric cars. They already figured that out in 1920. The concept of the electric car existed, and there were certainly proof-of-concept vehicles that did that, but the batteries were awful. 1920, and the technology was probably even better in 1920 than it is right now, but those motherfucking... It was not. Spoilers, it was not. It was really, really bad. Tesla cars that are driving around there that are $150,000. Does he really think like a 1920s electric car works better than a Tesla? And I detest Tesla as a company, but modern electric cars are functional vehicles that can be used to go hundreds of miles at a time on a single charge at normal road speeds and highway speeds. 1920s electric cars were not capable of going that distance or that speed. That nobody could afford. <laughs> oh, they have cheaper ones. Really? What happens if you live in an apartment? What are you gonna do? You're gonna run a cord <laughs> to your fucking car out in the street? Think, people. This annoyed Baja in particular because before we moved into this house that we're renting, Baja has only owned one car it's an electric car, not a Tesla, but it's an electric car. I'm not going to tell you specifically what it is, because why the fuck would I tell you what people's specific vehicles are? Anyway, uh, <laughs> it's an electric car. She used to live in an apartment. First of all, a lot of apartments either have, at least in larger cities, either have... Okay, well, Baja just said it. It's a Chevy Bolt. I didn't dox that. She did. Um... <laughs> um Okay, I wasn't sure. Anyway, uh, a lot of apartment complexes, at least in bigger cities, have electric car charging stations, or they're all over the place, like in the city where we live. They're all over the place. Again, I'm not going to say where, but they're around. Baja used to charge her car while she was at work because her work had charging stations. And you know what, Chris? If you really need to, yes, you can plug electric cars directly into the wall. <laughs> That's how they work. Why is he so befuddled by this? Think. 
You got to think rationally. People aren't thinking rationally. They just they don't know. They they think they can see a star from a billion miles away, billion light years away. Light years. Do you know how long that is? Do you know how far away that is? Very far. Do you know how big and bright stars are? Very big and very, very bright. Robert Morley says, Love my Tesla Model S and my McLaren GT. Spoiler alert, it was only 110,000, not 150. Electric is the future. Nice. You want to buy me a car? <laughs> I guess with all the bits you've donated, you maybe you did. <laughs> Do you have any idea? Take a flashlight for crying out loud. Go into a nice... Go ahead, just take a flashlight. Go out on a street. You don't even have to get a quarter fucking mile. And the, the light just disappears. It Chris, a flashlight is not as big or bright as a star. <laughs> it's an understatement, but it's a true statement nonetheless. Zarek Shadow says, Chris probably thinks these guys prevented the electric car from being released. I can't play the whole clip, though I do like the Stone Cutters episode of The Simpsons. Blackwing Hackity says, if you look to the left of your screen, you'll see an old man yelling at clouds. If you look to the right, you'll see a beautiful tinfoil clad dragoness. It's gone! Poof! People ask me about the stars. Oh, why am I looking at constellations different than when where, where you are? The constellations are different over there. Well, think, you idiot. It's the perspective you have. I'll make it even simple for you. Like the perspective on different places. On a globe? Like if I'm over here in America... And you're over here in America, we're looking at different parts of the sky. Or even more, this side versus this side. Hemispheres. See how that works? Crazy. Okay, I'm at a lake. You're looking at a you're looking at the moon reflecting off the lake. I see the moon over here, and the person on the other side of the lake sees the moon over here. Okay, that's the perspective people need to understand. Okay, that's amazing light show up there. That's all there is. It would be absolutely impossible to see a star that's billions of light years away and you can see the light. Absolutely impossible. It's how anybody can even believe that, how I believed it, and I never thought of anything. Because, you know, when you're in, when you're in school, the teacher, the authoritative figure is telling you all of this shit and you're absorbing it. And then you've got the globe right there in front of you when you're, when you're in high school. And it's... It, I don't even think I had globes in high school. Flat earthers very much overstate the amount of stuff that is taught in school about the shape of the earth. I think that came up like once in kindergarten. <laughs> it just doesn't come up. What are they talking about? This guy come up fallen says light years are a measurement of distance, not time. You dumbass. Argonian bum, thanks for 19 months. I got this globe at a thrift store the other day. $5. Worth it. There it is. You're telling you more that we live on a globe. We live on this. You don't live on anything but a flat, stationary land. You're covered with a dome. I don't know what the fuck the stars are, but they're not stars. That's an amazing light show. And that I don't know what the stars are, but they're not stars. Good quote. Good pull quote. <sighs> That's all that is up there. And that's it, bottom line. Look, you choose to believe it or you choose not to. If you want to know what you really live in, that's what we live in. And if you want to believe that you live on this fucking spinning wet ball, that's fine. Great. I don't care. Doesn't make a difference. Seems like you care a little. I mean, it just, it, 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 it's, it's unbelievable. It really is. Okay. Is he in a prison van? No, he drives, uh, he works for a company that contracts with hospitals and uh, other facilities that have a lot of people in wheelchairs. So it's like a wheelchair accessible van that he drives around, which is unfortunate because he's unvaccinated and probably comes into contact with a lot of uh, high risk individuals for COVID. Tucker White with a link. 
If it'll love. You're a stupid dumbass. Okay. It, it is. It is. There's so much more I want to talk to you about, but I'll, maybe I'll get into it uh, tonight. But I just want to give you some things to think about, okay? So I uh, thank you for subbing. I thank you for viewing my videos. Let me be a part of your life. So that's one of his newest videos. CC puts out so much. It's like a greatest hits. You just got to hit all of them, you know? Mm, what did someone ask? How did the whole flat earth conspiracy start? The ancient Greeks knew this, <laughs> that this was round. Um, that's a good question. There have been a, uh, multiple flat earth resurgences throughout history, throughout the like post-classical period. Um, this most recent one has its roots in the internet, deeply within the internet, but it sort of came out of um, a movement, I want to say in the early 20th or late 19th century, I don't remember exactly when, but there was a book written called Zetetic Astronomy. Again, I forget the author's name, uh, but that is a book about flat earth and many of the arguments from zetetic astronomy have found their way into the lexicon of modern flat earthers and the internet snowballed it into a whole new movement and now these people make their own like proofs air quote evidences that the earth is flat or that the earth isn't round all sorts of stuff zoetic astronomy i thought it was zetetic zetetic astronomy yeah zetetic Zetetic Astronomy, Earth, Not a Globe, Paperback. 750. Ooh, I need to get that. <sighs> Samuel Robotham, that was his name. Samuel Robotham was an English inventor, writer, and socialist who wrote Zetetic Astronomy, Earth, Not a Globe, under the pseudonym Parallax. His work was originally published as a 16 page pamphlet and later expanded into a book. Robotham's method, which he called Zetetic Astronomy, models the Earth as a flat disk centered around the North Pole and bound along its perimeter by a wall of ice with the sun, moon, planets, and stars moving over, moving only several thousand miles above the surface of the Earth. Hmm. So yeah, he's kind of the father of modern flat Earth, at least his texts are, which then got picked up by people like Mark Sargent, um, and spiraled out into what we see today. Luckily, it's dying down. The height of the online Flat Earth movement was 2017, and it's been dying down ever since, but it's still interesting to look at these people because these people are going to believe this for the rest of their life, most likely. I don't foresee Chris ever coming around on this, but, you know. All right, same, same day. Okay, um, yeah, I was going to surprise you. Um, and, and do like a, you know, double video, but unfortunately the, the phone has to, I mean, not my phone, uh, the, the camera has to charge up because I depleted the batteries for some reason or another, and then it'll take about, uh, I would say about two hours to charge that, you know, camera. Um, <laughs> see, this is what I'm talking about, charging. See, so what am I going to do right now? What am I going to do? If my electric car that your new president is out there trying to remote, what am I going to do? He's super pissed about electric cars for some reason. I'm, I'm going to hold the cord out here. Chris, what happens if your car runs out of gas? You plan ahead and you fuel your vehicles. What are you talking about? In my apartment and, and, and run it out to my car and charge it overnight? No, it's all bullshit. It's crap. Look, you will never have an electric car. Unless if you want to buy it, of course. That's how everything works? <laughs> what? Again, um, a lot of large car brands are switching over to electric. I know... This decade and the first half of the 2030s are um, going to be real big for electric cars with American manufacturers. GM is planning to switch all their models to electric by 2035, I want to say. I'm not sure about Ford, but I know they're switching over their biggest truck 
as in like their best selling truck over to electric and that's one of the best selling vehicles if not the best selling vehicle in the country hydrate you sent me an email okay um interesting uh and i imagine other country car manufacturers are doing much of the same i'm sure there'll still be some vehicles that use fossil fuels utility vehicles and stuff that need to be fueled very quickly for whatever reason trucks probably for a while until they can figure out how to fast charge even quicker um the problem with that of course is the more energy that's stored in the battery and the quicker you charge it that has risks involved with fire <laughs> fires and stuff um but yeah the technology is just going to continue to improve there's nothing wrong with electric cars they're very cool they're better for the environment um it's good to get these switched out well on the back end we try and replace like coal uh and fossil fuel based energy production facilities and switch them over to more renewables stuff like that tucker white says i've heard dumber excuses to link this video you wouldn't download a car blackwing heck he says raid time folks have fun Car companies will always try to come out with something that's electric. BMW has already. I think Audi has. Hyundai, I'm not sure. I think they're behind on that one. But I, Honda, I mean, electric cars are shit. There's they're really not. Again, like I said, Vaha has one. I really like it. The next car I get, I plan on doing electric. Just because I like her car so much, I plan on getting the same car. Um, unless, I guess, if the, at the time, because I don't need a car right now. I don't plan on buying one, you know, until I need one, at least more severely. Um, so I might wait some more years and try and get a later used model. Um, but either way, you know, I think electric cars are great. I think they're cool. They're quiet. They run very nice. Instant torque. <laughs> uh, I think they're cool. Tucker White says, bitch, I would totally download a car. True. Why not? There, there's there's no market for it. Okay, no one's gonna buy an electric car. They depend on oil. Chris, just because you don't want something, doesn't mean everyone feels the same way as you, and that's okay. I'm not telling you you have to buy an electric car, but the market is gonna dictate what gets made because we live in a market economy. It's how it works. Rachelgy, sorry I missed your bits, said, Is it me or is CC's ability to think through what he's saying getting worse? He's getting more agitated, for sure. We all depend on oil. And when your gas prices go up to $6 a gallon, when it comes down to June... Probably going to be a lot. We just cut off oil imports from Russia, and I think we were getting about 10% of our oil from Russia or something like that. Doesn't seem like a lot, but it's going to affect things. Personally... I'm fine with it. I'd rather us not be doing business for oil with Russia, considering how they're acting right now. Um, but I understand that's also going to be rough. I'm not going to lie. That's another good reason to switch over to electric vehicles, though. Ironically enough. It's weird that he's bringing this up. High gas prices are a reason to switch to electric, Chris. <laughs> this guy comment fallen says, I live in a coal-based energy state. I don't think electric cars would be... Uh, more carbon, I don't think electric car would be more carbon neutral for me. I actually don't know the statistics on that in terms of, like, filling up a electric vehicle's battery versus the production of gasoline, but I gotta imagine it's still better, because it doesn't cost very much to fill up an electric car. It costs, like, $2. Um, that's just a guess, though. And either way, getting the end product stuff, like cars is a good step in the right direction either way, and then in the back end we work on developing more clean energy sources for the grid itself. Tucker White says, The market dictates what gets made, but if it's a commuter trains, rapid transport, or better public transit, then F you, buy a car. Of 20... <laughs> 22. You're going to say, why? So you're going to turn around and, and, and just buy an electric car i mean what, what choices do you have let's take a look okay you got bmw okay, and now a bmw is going to cost you about one hundred and twenty thousand dollars tesla tesla has uh three choices 
Okay, one's about the lowest one. The ch Teslas aren't cheap electric cars. Let's see. Uh, again, I don't even feel right looking up new prices for electric cars, right? Because most people don't buy new cars. Most people buy used. Let's take a look at uh, used cars. Used electric cars. Let me take this off the screen for just a second in case it's going to try and dox me. Let's see. Something that's not a Tesla, please. I'm trying to look at uh, used electric vehicle prices. And of course, they're all Teslas on this page. Why? <laughs> Okay, let's see. This 2015 BMW is $19,000, which again, for a lot of people, is expensive. But as these cars get older, they'll go down in price, especially as more hit the market. The Teslas are going to be more expensive, but as opposed to the 90000 price point, we're looking at more like 50000 which again is expensive. Uh, 2020 Lisa, Nissan Leaf is $25,000. Uh, this Nissan Leaf... Plus is 35,000. And again, these are still cars that have come out in the past five years. The used car market is the biggest market in the U.S. So as these things get older and more and more of these cars get put into the used car market and get older, the prices are going to come down. Uh, the Chevy Bolt's 30,000. Doesn't have very many miles on it. Tucker White says, how could it dox you, Hannah? We already know you're a lizard person. Uh, Occult Comics says, for some hopium and good feelings, you have given them an ideal to aspire to, embodied their highest aspirations. They will race and stumble and fall and crawl and curse. And finally, they'll join you in the sun, Kal-El. They'll stumble, they will fall, but in time, they will join you in the sun. In time, you will help them accomplish wonders. One of the only good bits of dialogue from a Zack Snyder film. <laughs> Uh, it's a shame that movie sucked. Um, Lily Love Stuff, thanks for 20 months. Says 20 months, dang, time flies. I know, right? Cheapest one is about $40,000. But you have to buy a power station with that, too. But you have to have a house in order to put that power station in. Because if you live in an apartment building, they're not going to allow that in there because that could cause a fire. Remember the skateboards that exploded? Robert Morley said he emailed me. Where did you email me? Batteries? Maybe you don't remember that. You might have forgotten about that. See, it's not going to happen. It'll never happen. We'll always be dependent on fuel. Um, no. Literally, that's impossible, considering there is a finite amount of fossil fuel. Occult Comics says that's actually from Grant Morrison's All-Star Superman. It's why it's so good. Please read All-Star Superman. Oh, that makes sense. Zack Snyder didn't write it. The first engine that came out was powered with gasoline. So, uh, four. The first internal combustion engine? First internal combustion en engine. I find it hard to believe it used what we would consider modern gasoline, even if we're talking about, like, leaded gasoline, but I don't know. Let's see. Commercial liquid fuel industry. No, two-stroke gasoline engine. Okay. I'm wrong on that one. And then some years later, Rudolph Diesel. Well, gee, I wonder what he's famous for. <laughs> uh, anyway. Ford decided to end electric. Um, not the first engine, the first combustion engine, the first internal combustion engine. Because he had all this money in steam engines, a different thing. This particular item, and he ended it, and he squashed electric, electric engines. <laughs> he ended it, and he made us dependent on oil, and that's what this entire country is all made of, and that's what's running this country, and that's what's running every fucking price and every fucking war that's going on right now. Because it's all...
sent to Hannah Reloaded. Wrong email. Hannah Reloaded 94. So throw a 94 at the end of that. <laughs> Bullshit. It's all about oil. It's all about energy. The next crisis is energy. And that's all it is. It's about that. Don't you understand this? Can't you see this? That's what it's all about. Uh, G Tara, thanks for two months, says, yay, my first anniversary. Nice. It's also about Flat Earth, too, but I'm just saying energy. And the big companies are making billions, trillions of money. Pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies have just, you know, you should have, I, I should have. Maybe you should have invested in something in pharma, you know, because they're making, they're, they're now trillionaires. Oh yeah. Hannah is spelled H-A-N-N-A-H also. There's an H at the end. Anyway, look. Dirt Sure says, yes, there'll be an energy crisis. Shouldn't we get ahead of it now? You'd think. You gotta wake the fuck up. And if you don't, you're asleep. And if you're trolling me right now, you're so asleep or you're paid. That's, just, that's how it works. Okay? It's as simple as that. That's what this entire country, this entire world is dependent on. And every single thing that's priced for you right now in the supermarket or wherever the fuck you go is dependent on somebody bringing it to you. And if they're bringing it to you, they're bringing it with fuel. This was all back in 1910, 1920. It was squashed. The electric car was squashed back then. The Chris, we know. What does this have to do with now? Sky Comet Fallen says, swirls finger next to head and crazy gestures. Tucker White says, a simple solution, federalize the infrastructure, federalize BNSF, CSX, Kansas City Southern, Norfolk Southern, Union Pacific, just federalize everything. Came back out with it in 1982 or 81 or whatever the fuck the year it was, and they squashed it back then. The batteries weren't capable back then, Chris. Like, Tesla, I don't like Tesla, again... But clearly investors have a lot of faith in them considering they have the highest market cap of, like, all the major auto players combined right now. Excuse me, at least last time I checked. You know, it's a shame. It really is. It, it is an absolute shame that people don't understand this. You know, they, they, they just, they, they don't see the bridge when it was rebuilt. And we... Okay, I think I'm about done with Chris for today. He just keeps going on and on. There's a couple short ones. At least, we'll, we'll watch this one short one and then we'll move on because I think this is going to get something off the bingo card. All right, uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you may be. Uh, CC here, Chris, from New York, uh, Westchester County. It's uh, 3 5 22. I'm just enjoying these chemtrails. I mean, look, look. Bingo card! Do, do you see that? Right there? Yes, Chris. I do see it. It's not a chemtrail. Those aren't real. Do you see that? Chris doesn't know that there are different shapes of clouds, nor does he know what contrails are. So that's pretty funny. Do you see this? Do you see all of it? Maybe you don't, because you're not awake. You think these are regular clouds. Just take a look. See, now that that's the sun right there. All right. Apparently, it's 93 million miles away, but it's not. We don't have fake sky yet. Not. It's local. <sighs> Just take a look at that. They've been doing this for like 40 years now. Look, look. So most of your life, 
you know, when you would maybe notice something like this? Because you're crazy. Do you see that? What, what, what type of cloud is that? Is that a sea serpent cloud? Sea serpent. That's what I'm going to call it. That probably already has a name. Let's look. Cloud types. I learned this in kindergarten, by the way. The different kinds of clouds. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Those appear to be stratocumulus clouds. Not a meteorologist, but that's the closest. Chris, there are different kinds of clouds with all different shapes and textures. Crazy, right? Could also be a contrail. Again, I don't know. I still didn't get an email, uh, Robert Morley, by the way. At least I didn't see one. Don't know if you sent it. Look at that. Look at all of these lines. Those aren't clouds, my friends. Stars are lights in the sky isn't fake sky. No, he's not saying it's fake. He just thinks they're closer than they appear, appear to be and that they aren't uh, large fusion reactors in space. These are not fucking clouds. They're clouds. Oh, there it is. <laughs> he knows a lot about the science. So that's what CC's been up to. Uh, yeah. That's about it. <laughs> Still crazy. Not good.